Marcus Stevens, General Manager, Kahisa New Media, a very warm welcome to you. Now, you make this very important point. South African publishers and brands that want to experience the best returns from their investments in digital advertising and marketing must be responsible and ethical in the ways that they use the wealth of consumer data that they're harvesting. You are suggesting, I'm assuming, that there is a big problem in this respect. What is it? Jeremy, thank you. Thanks for, uh, for having me today. Um, yes, I believe that uh, brands that want to uh, excel and really uh, set themselves aside from their competitors need to act ethically within this, the uh, digital space. You know, the, um, the advent of, of uh, digital devices and, and digital media, um, social media and, and, and the like have, have meant that there's lots of repositories for, in, for data. Um, so where people are connecting with brands, how people connect with brands, those are all sort of um, uh, exploding. Um, and I think brands need to act ethically when, when collecting that data and how they use that data. Give me an example then. In, in what respect then is unethical behavior actually manifesting itself? Um, Jeremy, I, I recently uh, purchased a vehicle, a motor vehicle, um, and I went and on congratulations. to- Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and I went on to um, one of the uh, um, many uh, engines that are available uh, to make a purchase and, and, and sort of do a, a selection process. Um, and uh, I found within uh, 24 hours of, of, uh, of a rec uh, putting a recommendation forward of, of a vehicle that I was interested in, I was uh, bombarded by uh, five or six different uh, vehicle uh, sellers, um, insurance brands, um, and adjacent uh, services, so tires, alarm fitment centers, uh, and the like. So Is this unethical behavior, or are these simply brands being opportunistic and operating in a capitalist society? Though? So, Jeremy, I think in, 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 that, in that regard, I think there's a bit of both in, that, in, 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 in truth in what you're saying there. So, yes, in, in some ways, uh, I think there were some opportunists, um, but certainly from uh, the manufacturers I was expecting to hear from, uh, those would, be, would have been acceptable. Yeah. So, so the ones I actually opted in for, um, the, you know, um, there was no, at no point did I ever tick a box to say I would accept other uh, marketing information and messaging. Um, and I think that's where I find, uh, you know, the, the ethics are starting to be blurred by uh, by those opportunists. Right, fair point. I want to look at the consumer side of this equation in just a moment. But what about the brands themselves? Is this having a real impact, a detrimental effect on the brand equity itself? Or do you think that this is something that brands simply see as acceptable risk in doing business? Jeremy, I think that those there, there are two sides to that story and i think that it, it comes down to whether or not brands are um acting um, ethically from the start in other words when they are requesting that you supply information are they being um, open and honest about what they're going to do with that information and i think um, consumers are not um, on, on are having a two-way conversation now with the you know with the um, injection of digital media into the space and i think that that has allowed consumers to uh, to to uh, to start governing them the, the way they see brands. So so if a brand says I'm going to use this information to uh, bring you an, another set of services or additional value, I think consumers are quite happy with that. Um, I think it's the brands that are, are sort of not letting you know what they're doing with their data. Fair point. So once might be acceptable, twice might be acceptable, but there comes a point where the consumer says enough is enough. Right. What about the consumers themselves, though? Uh, is there not an accepted level? of understanding and even annoyance in this respect, is that we, we know it's going to come and we will deal with it accordingly. I think yes, Jeremy. I think um, b before before this interview, I was I was certainly uh, sitting on the on, on the on the side of absolutely not. Uh, we won't accept it, and we shouldn't accept it. And and the more we spoke earlier, you know, uh, the more I, I understood that there perhaps is a level of uh, of, of acceptable annoyance. Um, and and to that point, I think if that adds value to my life, I don't mind being annoyed. It's the key phrase, you isn't know? it? And it's value, you know. Um, so as consumers, we say, well, you know. Do I really want a, a lower premium for my insurance? And and I, I please, I'm not taking the insurance uh, companies to task. I think it's just an easier, the, the the easiest example to give you. Do I want a lower insurance premium? Heck, yes, I do. Absolutely, I want one. But don't we have enviable law in this respect? Is that consumers have uh, rights and recourse? Absolutely. Are we, are we not using them, or do are we simply ignorant about it? What what is the position? So I think it's difficult to pinpoint uh, often as a consumer where and who sold the data. So um, in many respects, until you can trace back who the offender who who the offending company is that parted with your data, it's very difficult to pinpoint who I should be going. How after. difficult is that process? Um, 
Jeremy, I think it's almost almost impossible. I, th I think you know you've you've almost got to lull the uh, the 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 the, the, uh, the consultant into a false sense of security for them to part with who they who they representing uh, ultimately. Yeah. Um, they often and Mark, I mean, the reality is most of us don't have the time to do that or the inclination, so we're simply going to accept. Look, there are bodies that one can mm. one can report that to. I believe that there's capacity issues within those bodies, um, and so the consumers are again on its back foot. And I, I believe um, you know phone calls emails to, to those various bodies are often um, go unanswered. All right, Marcus Stevens, answer this question in conclusion and very briefly. As someone at the crossroads or the interface between brands and consumers in this respect, what would you like to see change? Uh, what, 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 would, what needs to change uh, in order for consumers to be happy but for brands to optimize their growth? Thanks, Jeremy. I think um, ultimately it comes down to quality content. So I think uh, brands should understand that they need to invest more in quality content and then give me the opportunity at that uh, juncture where I've, I've consumed that content to then let me uh, make use of additional services. Yeah, I sense that we're a long way off from that, though. Uh, Marcus Stevens, GM Cajiso, New Media, thank you very much for the insight. Jeremy, thanks.